We'll now use the idea of mixed strategy Nash equilibria to analyze a variation on a game that we've already seen. Let's look at the Bertrand duopoly model, but with capacity constraints. So this is just like the Bertrand model, except that a firm can't satisfy all of the market demand on its own. Just like before, firm one will set a price P1, firm two will set a price P2, and they will do this simultaneously. We'll assume that both firms have a constant marginal cost, and just to make life easy, we'll just assume that that marginal cost is zero. We're gonna assume a very simple demand behavior. We're gonna suppose that at any price less than or equal to one, the demand is 10 units. The firm setting the lower price, if they have different prices, gets to serve all 10, and if they set the same price, they both serve five. If we just follow the logic that we used last time when we analyzed the Bertrand model, albeit for a different demand function, we'd still come to the same conclusion that both firms are going to set their price equal to the marginal cost, which is zero. So the Nash equilibrium is going to be for both firms to set the price equal to zero. We'll see, however, that in the presence of capacity constraints, they're not going to do that. Suppose the capacity constraints are eight for both of the firms. So both firms have the capacity com constraints Q1 bar and Q2 bar equal to 8. So Q1 bar is the maximum quantity that firm 1 can supply. Q2 bar is the maximum quantity that firm 2 can supply. And they're both 8. So neither firm can serve more than 8. Notice that setting a price greater than 1 gives you a payoff of 0 because you're going to get 0 demand. So your revenue and therefore your payoff is going to be zero. If you set a price of one, you're guaranteed a, a positive payoff. Why? Because no matter what price your opponent sets, there's going to be at least two units of demand left over for you. So you can get a payoff of at least two by setting a price of one. So prices above one are strictly dominated by the price one. So we can just ignore those prices above one. In other words, we can delete them and restrict attention to prices between zero and one. Can we find a P1 star and a P2 star that form a Nash equilibrium so that the best response of firm one when firm two sets the price P2 star is to set the price P1 star and vice versa? It turns out that there is no such pure strategy Nash equilibrium. So we'll show that first and then we'll derive a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. As we've done previously, we'll show this by process of elimination. In other words, we'll look at various configurations of P1 star and P2 star and show that none of them could be a Nash equilibrium. Let's start with a configuration that would have been an equilibrium without the capacity constraints, where both firms set their price equal to their marginal cost, which is zero. Well, in this case, both firms get a payoff of zero. Remember that each firm could unilaterally move their price to one and ensure themselves a payoff of two, even when the other firm is setting the price of zero. So for both firms to set their price equal to zero can't be an equilibrium. The next case to consider is where both firms set prices less than one, but they're not the same price. So firm I's price is less than firm J's price. Then J's payoff is going to be two times PJ star. That's because firm I gets to serve eight, while firm J gets the remaining two. But firm J could increase its price to PJ equals 1 and ensure itself a payoff of 2. So it can't possibly be that it's an equilibrium for both firms to set a price lower than 1 and yet have different prices. Now let's consider another configuration where both firms set the same price, P1 star equals P2 star, but unlike the first case that we considered, that common price is bigger than 0. Well, this case is very similar to the case without capacity constraints. When both firms have the same price, both firms serve 5. So they have the payoff of PI star times 5. PI star and PJ star are the same. By reducing the price by just a little bit, a firm can increase the demand that they serve from 5 to 8. So let's say epsilon is some small positive number. Then they could reduce their price from PI star to PI star minus epsilon for some very small epsilon. Then their demand increases to 8 and payoff is pi star minus epsilon times eight. And if epsilon is very small, then pi star minus epsilon times eight is gonna be bigger than pi star times five. So again, p1 star equal to p2 star, both being some number bigger than zero, can't be in equilibrium either. 
This leaves only one remaining configuration. That's where one of the firms, P, let's call it I, sets a lower price than the other firm, J, and the higher firm sets a price of one. So the picture looks like this. PJ star is one, zeros down here. PI star is something between zero and one. But now what firm I can do is to raise their price just a little bit. They're still gonna get demand of eight because they still have a lower price, but they're gonna get a higher payoff. So it can't be that PI star is the best response to PJ star. So by process of elimination, we've shown that there's no configuration of pure strategies that could be a Nash equilibrium. If there is a Nash equilibrium to this game, notice that this is not a finite game, so the result that I showed you earlier doesn't apply. But if this is if there's going to be a Nash equilibrium, it has to be in mixed strategies. This game is symmetric. They both have the same capacity constraint. They both would receive the same demand should they have the lower price. They would receive the same demand if they had the higher price. And so the game treats them both equally. So we're going to look for what's called a symmetric Nash equilibrium, where they both play the same strategy. So they're going to randomize over their strategies with the same probabilities. One reason symmetry helps is because it simplifies the analysis because we can just solve for one of the mixed strategies and the other player's mixed strategy would be the same. We're going to use a cumulative distribution function, f, to represent the mixed strategy that both of the players are going to follow. Just a reminder, the CDF tells us for all x in the interval 0 to 1, f of x is the probability that the firm sets a price pi less than or equal to x. So if you're confused about what a CDF is, I would encourage you to look that up. But for our purposes here, for every x between 0 and 1, f of x is the probability that the price that the firm is going to set is less than or equal to x. One can prove that for it to be a Nash equilibrium, that both of the players randomize according to the cumulative distribution f, it has to be that f is a continuous function. I'm not going to prove that here, but the idea is basically that if f is not continuous, then there's some jumps in f. So if this is x and this is the probability, a CDF, remember it looks something like this, and for any x, for any x, this is the probability that the random variable or the, the price that's chosen according to this distribution is in here. If this function isn't continuous, that means there's a jump somewhere. So there's some x star where there's a jump in the cumulative distribution function. You can use the same arguments that we used earlier to show that there's no pure strategy Nash equilibrium to contradict the existence of a cumulative distribution with a jump like this. This is what we would call a mass point. At this mass point, x star, you would be able to make the arguments that we've made above to show that there's no nat pure strategy Nash equilibrium and rule out these types of jumps in the cumulative distribution function. But I won't do that for this course. It's a little bit more technical. So we'll just assume that f has to be continuous. Though we make this assumption, we'll see that the f that we're going to solve for will indeed be continuous. Now, if both firms are randomizing according to the CDF f, then firm i's payoff from setting price pi is well, what's the probability that my opponent is going to set a price lower than mine? Well, it's f of pi, right? That's the probability that pj is less than pi. With probability 1 minus f of pi, my opponent is going to set a higher price. That's the probability that from j sets a higher price than pi. If my opponent sets a higher price, then I get a payoff of 8 times the price that I set, which is pi. If my opponent sets a lower price, then I get demand of 2 times the price that I set, which is pi. So my expected payoff is 8pi times the probability that the opponent's price is higher, plus 2 times pi times the probability that the opponent's price is lower. What's the payoff from setting a price pi equals 1? Well, we can just plug in pi here. Remember, with probability 1, they're both setting a price less than or equal to 1. So the C value of the CDF at 1 has to be equal to 1. If we plug f of 1 equals 1 into this equation, we get that the payoff to setting pi equals 1 is the first term is going to be 0 because if I set a price of 1, the probability that the other guy sets a price higher than mine is 0. So I, I'm never going to get 8 demand. So with probability 1, I'm going to get payoff of 2 times pi. pi is 1. So I get 2. Remember that 
in a mixed strategy, any pure strategy that I'm playing with positive probability has to give me the same exact payoff. In other words, any price that a firm sets with positive probability has to yield the same payoff, which is 2. However, if I set a very low price, let's say I set a price of close to 0, my payoff is not going to be 2. Even if I get the entire demand, the most I can serve are 8. So if I set a price of 0, my payoff is going to be 0. So it can't be that I'm going to set all prices with positive probability. So for prices that are low enough, I'm not going to set them. So the firms are only going to set prices in some interval p lower bar to 1. And for each of these prices, the payoff has to be the same. In other words, for every x in the interval from p lower bar to 1, ax times 1 minus f of x plus 2x times f of x has to equal 2. If we solve for f of x, f of x is 4x minus 1 divided by 3x. Remember that neither firm is going to set a price lower than p lower bar. So the probability that either firm sets a price lower than p lower bar is 0. So we then have that f of p lower bar is equal to 0. So we can plug in p lower bar here to solve for p lower bar. So f of p lower bar is 4 p lower bar minus 1 divided by 3 p lower bar. And that has to equal to 0. So we solve for p lower bar and we find that p lower bar is a quarter. So we now know the interval over which the two firms are going to randomize, which is a quarter to 1. So each firm randomizes its price over the interval quarter to 1. And it does so according to the CDF f of x equals 4 x minus 1 divided by 3x. And that's the symmetric Nash equilibrium.